Welcome back everyone to Grand Tactician The Civil War. Well, there was a major update. It was a five gigabyte patch, 1.05. Uh, main uh, battle improvements to the AI, including deployment and defensive behavior, uh, further game option to decrease or increase the number of 3D models shown per unit, army and fleet management improvements, including shipyard capacity, quick construction of ships, reinforcement options for units and armies, detaching a core from an army, creation of an independent core after military two policy, and the ability to change the uniform and colors after recruitment. That's pretty cool. Uh, fix the fame system, including redeeming lost fame through time or battle honors and positive morale effects from famous commanders. Supply depots can be abandoned by a player and the AI. Commander and unit histories are updated during the campaign. Uh, lock map rotation only applies to mouse rotation, not hotkeys, and some bug fixes and balance improvements. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in to our current playthrough. Looks like we've got a little change here in the... Uh, user interf interface as well. It looks a little different. A little cleaner, I think. Let's take a look at those settings that it was talking about and see what we've got available to us. Number of models in battle. We're going to raise that all the way to the highest level. Maybe. It doesn't look like it's going to allow us to do that, at least not right now. Alright, so here's one of the other things that we're seeing that's new here. Uh, you can choose to send certain units home uh, to be replenished uh, on a furlough. It'll help them recuperate and recruit. During this time, the unit will not be available for battles, but it will receive reinforcements faster. So that makes sense for like low, like units that are super low. You can also set them as a, a high re uh, reinforcement priority. You can click to allow reinforcements by volunteers only and all subordinates, or you can choose to make them um, by draftees only or both draftees and volunteers. Uh, so let's find an example of a unit. Oh, you can recolor the uniforms now. That's pretty cool. I want to find an example of a unit that's pretty low in manpower that we might want to uh, send home for a furlough. Okay, so here's a, a good example right here. The 5th SFG. Uh, they've got 885 disabled. They've got 1,500 men available. They also have a perk available. Uh, so let's go ahead and give them sharpshooters. Uh, we're going to go ahead and send them for a replenishment. So now you can see, wow, okay, 94 days. <laughs> okay, maybe that wasn't the best idea. So it's good to know that. Uh, maybe I should have tested it on a non patron unit to start. But um, some of these, it doesn't even give us the option to send them home. Um, it's not possible if the unit is in garrison, has full strength, or is being transferred. All right, so that one has full strength. That's why. So I'm going to go up here to some of these depots that I'm not using anymore. Uh, and it actually says that we, we get some of those goods back. And they can be utilized elsewhere. So uh, that's good in places where I don't need those depots anymore because I was kind of building my way south in certain instances. So there's probably other places we can do that as well, but that's a good example right there. Um, yeah, we'll get rid of some of these Lexington de depots as well. And I'm kind of sitting tight as we get ready to get into Christmas time here. There's funding to policy. Let's go ahead back to our policies now. Uh, we're using 10 out of 10, so what I want to do here is I want to go to finances and finance another policy. See what we might have available to us. So we've got military three. That'll help us maximize recruitment. I don't think we need that. I would like to get US colored troops, but I but we need emancipation first in order to be able to do that. I'm also looking at diplomacy four. Uh, all requires Enforced Neutrality Act as a pre-war policy, so we don't have that, so we can't do additional ones there. We're going to go ahead and do Emancipation. Okay, now that they're able to move, I'm going to start moving the, uh, the rest of the Army of the Tennessee down to Nashville. I'm going to pull the Army of Indiana back up uh, into Kentucky so they can kind of protect in case he tries to get around me again. We do have the Department of the West now into northern Mississippi. 
where we're working on some supply depots. Uh, and then we've got... Actually, I thought I had another army over there, but I guess that was that army. Uh, we were marching on Richmond, and I think we're about ready to fight another battle for that. Let's make sure we have everybody we want. I'd really like to get the Third Corps down there. How about we do this? Let's send the Third Corps down the Shenandoah Valley to Stanton. And then if they don't encounter any Confederate troops, then we'll swing them around toward Richmond. So now this is cool. You can highlight, uh, you can hover over national morale and see exactly what goes into the current national morale, what's affecting it. Uh, you can look at the fielded manpower uh, and see exactly what the la latest changes are uh, based on casualties, based on attrition, which is a significant part of them uh, right now for me, uh, and then return to service. Volunteers available, drafts available, uh, recruits used for reinforcements. Uh, here we've got shipyard utilization. We can see that we have one ship currently under uh, construction. Uh, so there's just a little bit more information available than there had been before. Santa fighting for the Union. Thomas Nass depicts Santa Claus. <laughs> All right. Okay, so there are Confederate forces in this area, or we suspect there are, but they may have actually moved at this point. So we're going to hold tight with the Third Corps right there. Uh, I think we do need to probably build up our supply depot is a little bit more yeah and then we might need to just kind of sit tight until springtime to really make a move actually we don't have any so yeah, we got one supply depot here let's upgrade it okay so we've got Fort Webb built here in uh, eastern Tennessee and that's gonna kind of give us a jumping off point for future endeavors we've also got a fort that we're in the process of building outside of Nashville uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get them build up as quickly as we can I can find Fort Webb there it is uh, so let's go ahead and recruit two units uh, of infantry as well as some artillery and add all of those it'll only take about three weeks to get that fully stocked and once that is uh, then I feel like we'll be free with Sherman's Army of Kentucky uh, to start marching on Chattanooga and I may send some help in the form of maybe McClellan's Corps to do that. I think we should probably build Sherman's army up a little bit too. So let's add another division. It's going to be under William Buell Franklin. Actually, that's a corps. That's really not what we want here. Um... Yeah, we'll have to fix that. So what we can do is we just drag everything over. Now yeah, I'll fix it. All right, we've got a naval battle going here. And it looks like we won a victory. Uh, all the enemy ships escaped, but a couple of them were in pretty poor condition there. The Cairo Squadron's doing its job protecting the water north of Memphis. He does have some units, an Army of Missouri... Uh, there's emancipation this should now open up being able to do u.s colored troops that's going to take 60 days we can also go after actual abolition remember an emancipation only was a war measure it was temporary it only lasted as long as the war did once the war was over they needed to do something else that's why we had the 13th amendment uh, to the constitution which abolished slavery and was finally uh, completely ratified by the states uh, in December of 1865. That's when slavery officially became illegal in the United States. All right, so Fort Webb Garrison has about 6,000 men in it now. I feel like that's enough. Uh, Sherman's got his reinforcements. Let's go ahead and make a move on Chattanooga. I'm still sitting tight with most of these forces in and around Nashville, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and send McClellan down to help out with Chattanooga. I feel like between the fort and the units that I've got here and then the Army of Indiana up here, I've got enough uh, to get the job done there. We're still sitting outside of Richmond. The Third Corps has now joined. Uh, he does have all of these forces over here, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. I think what I wanna do is make a move on Richmond, take Richmond, 
and then we can go after some of those other forces or we can let them come to me. Although I, I feel like I probably need to have somebody up there in Winchester. Maybe create another force to, to handle the Shenandoah Valley. Okay, here's a chance to smash Beauregard's core of the Army of the South. Uh, we've got him better than 2 to 1. We've got nearly 120,000 men here against his 50,000. These are like Chancellorsville numbers. Let's hope it's not a repeat of what happened at Chancellorsville historically in May of 1863. Um, so let's see what happens. Chance to take Richmond, perhaps? So interesting. Yeah, I forgot we have Joe Hooker as our commander, too. And it even has a Joe Hooker Chancellorsville quote at the bottom there. <laughs> May God have mercy on Bobby Lee, for I will have none. And then it didn't exactly go that way for Hooker. So uh, first things first, I want to see, do we have everybody at once? No, we do not have Sumner uh, with the second corps. He'll arrive in about two hours. He's going to arrive from Hanoverton, or Hanover Town. So it's even going to tell us the direction from which we can expect him uh, to come. So that's cool. Let's go ahead and start getting everybody into place. We get to control most of the map here. The Confederates are going to come in from these other areas here. I'll probably throw a division up here to protect from there, but throw everybody else kind of focused down toward Cold Harbor. So first things first, I'm going to send out scouts in the form of the cavalry. I do have Halleck's division protecting against a crossing right here. Uh, but we're going to send our scouts out and see if we can't figure out exactly where he is before we start making moves. All right, so we hit the end of the day, uh, and I got a notification that one of my guys was wounded, which is interesting because we haven't really made contact with anyone. We're just now starting to spot him. Uh, we do have the second corps now arrived on the field, but kind of out of the way a little bit to where they can't really do me a lot of good, at least not yet. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get redeployed. We're gonna try to build a battle line right in here and see if we can't strangle these guys. So we're going to move this core right up here along this creek. Um, I'm going to try to send my cavalry out and around his force if I can. Because it looks like he's pretty much in the center. And we know we've got the numbers. Let's see what those estimated numbers are. 116,000 to 58,000 right now. Uh, there are already casualties showing up. Those are just some disabled. He's got 3,000 missing right now. Not entirely sure why, but... We have to keep that in mind in terms of the inflicted casualties. We're moving the second corps down over here on the left, but it looks like the Confederates are going to launch an assault on my center, big time. All right, so let's move the Foreign Legion into a position where they can hit Forney's brigade right there. All right, Sheridan, looks like you're gonna take the brunt of this thing. I do have some cav right here I can, I can bring around. Smith, Whipple, let's see. Give him sharpshooter. We've got Greg there. Here's the Finnish heavy guns. This is our Nordic division holding right in the, right in the center. Danish Berserkers, Deadly Volley. And then next to them we've got the Royal Highlanders, the Victorian Volunteers who are an elite unit, and the Royal Americans. Let's get the Redcoats to start firing long range. Oh, I don't know what happened with the calf there, they got turned around. How are we doing? A lot of casualties already. You figure he already had 3,000. We're actually pretty even on casualties so far. A lot of fire coming in on Whipple's brigade, but we've got a reserve brigade there, so it shouldn't be a problem. Ricketts with the Danish Berserkers, they're doing pretty well. 
wonder if I can adjust the graphic options, options now that we're in. Yeah, for some reason, not letting me change that. Not sure why. Alright, things are pretty quiet right here. We're finally getting this division in a position. Let's go ahead and tell Buell to come around. Get on the creek there. And then I'm going to move Patterson's division up to cover their flank. We'll move Halleck forward as well. Send all three of these cavalry brigades up here. See what's happening. Alright, let's redeploy Halleck that direction. Alright, who was wounded? Ricketts, the commander of the Danish Berserkers. Things are getting hot down there. But he was wounded. They've lost 500 men. But they're holding on quite well. They're taking on a lot of Confederates right now. We got cover from the Swedish guards on the left. I think we're good over on this side. How are we coming with the second corps? They're on their way down. Gonna bring up some additional artillery. Man, Scammon's taking forever to get his division in position. I need him to give them long range orders so they can hit from this distance. Our elite Victorian volunteers, they've only lost 22 men. Alright, what's going on over here? Alright, our cavalry just ran into it big time. Gonna need them to keep these guys busy while Halleck gets up with his division. Let's give him an attack order. That cavalry's all gonna break just because of the position they were in. I sent them in to charge on what I thought was a lone brigade, and there's at least two divisions there. We've got Plumber's Division that we can send up to help out over here. I think we're going to be fine holding on this side. We need Buell to give long range orders so these guys can start firing. Alright, everything's looking good so far. Let's see how we're doing here. The cab's not really in a position to fire. Smith's taking it on the chin right now, but he's doing alright. Ooh. Danish Berserkers have lost a thousand men. They may break, especially once they get over 50% casualties. Which, for an entire brigade, did not happen all that often in the war. I think the highest casualties for a single brigade in one battle probably was the Iron Brigade at Gettysburg. Yeah, plus these guys have lost their commanding officer. So they're going to have to put the Norwegian Raiders on the line here pretty soon. I would pull them back myself if I had the option to do that. give him a defend order. Maybe he'll make some adjustments himself. Alright, Halleck. Get your men in the line and hold this position. As U.S. regulars, they've seen a lot of fighting. 
We've got another division coming in up here on the side. I think I'm going to actually have to give them a double line order. Alright, Scammon, I want you to attack. Just got to hold over here on the right flank. Second course, finally getting getting into position. Right, get your people in order here, Halleck. And maybe get behind your division instead of way out by yourself. So he's got 10,000 men there. We've got an additional 7,500. Actually, only 5,600 right now. Coming up over here. Broke Jackson. Mansfield, attack. Man, this has been pretty intense. <laughs> Almost 6,000 casualties for me. He's only got about 10,000 casualties. That 3,000 were already there before the battle started. Fifth Division, attack, assault actually, yeah. Morgan, attack. Ninth Division, attack. There's very few Confederates on the line at this point over there. Halleck, you just need to hold. We break one or two more Confederates and this battle's probably over just in time for the second quarter to get in on the action. Confederates charging into the second US infantry. That's an elite unit. That was a mistake, my friend. Now we've turned it into a major victory. Right at the gates of Richmond. He's out of here. All right, so 18,000 casualties for Lieutenant General Richard Taylor, who is the son of Zachary Taylor, President of the United States. 7,400 casualties for me out of 118,000. We can handle those kinds of losses, especially if it opens the door to taking the Confederate capital of Richmond. General Mansfield becomes a national hero. Is this enough to take Richmond? We're going to find out here in a second. Let's give Phil Sheridan a perk. I like the Ambulance Corps perk. Sheridan may be the first to march into the city. We'll see. Let's send Sumner down. Army of the Potomac now has a third perk. Send the headquarters in. We're going to send Winfield Scott with the first corps. We're going to send Orlando Wilcox. We're going to send everybody to make sure we can secure Richmond. It's interesting that these units we just defeated have not fallen back yet. There is a garrison. Only 51 men in that garrison. But we'll still probably have to lay siege to the city. He is sending reinforcements in this direction, though. We're probably going to have to face these guys. Okay, glorious victory at Fort Pogue. So we've taken the fort with its 51 defenders. Richmond is falling to our troops. He is coming back at me, but there it is. Richmond falls, Confederate capital taken. The president flees. Southerners in shock. Union presses on. February 1863, we've taken Richmond. Now to hold it. I'm going to start sending some of my corps over to the left because we are engaged in some kind of skirmish type things over here. 
So let's get all of our reinforcements in that direction for what will probably be a big showdown to hold our gains. There's a Charleston squadron right here. I'm going to send these ships down there to go deal with them. All right, Confederate national morale is down to 34 now. If it gets under 25, the war is over. Uh, Fort Pogue is the garrison in Richmond. Let's go ahead and recruit some units to go in there. It's not going to take long to get them in. Let's see what happens with this naval battle here. We've only got three ships. Idaho Territory organized, but I've got 84 guns to his 26. Oh, we sank some ships. Look at that. Sank the General Clinch and the Arctic. He's got a couple of gunboats here. They may be a little harder to sink. Still some skirmishing happening on the outskirts of Richmond. I might need to go move on Petersburg. He's got 20,000 men down there. All right, so McClellan got here before Sherman did, and he took Chattanooga. Who would have thought that McClellan would move faster than Sherman? But we're going to be here in Chattanooga. Let's go ahead and start building up another naval victory at Memphis Ferry. Let's start building up our supply base in Chattanooga, and that's going to be putting us in a position for a move on Atlanta. Which Atlanta was not a large city at the time. It was uh, like the maybe the fourth largest city in Georgia, <laughs> but it was a major rail hub, which is what made it so important. All right, I'm going to send Meade with his nearly 36,000 men. See if we can't go confront McGowan's Corps, 26,000 strong. I don't see anybody else over there, but I'd like to clear these guys out a little bit. We've got Early's Corps over here. There it is, colored Union troops recruited. Color men take arms. Nearly 200,000 uh, black soldiers fought in the Civil War. And uh, Lincoln credited them with helping turn the tide. Absolutely true. I mean, that's a significant percentage of the Union Army that was in the field. So what do we want to do next? I'm a little bit worried about the financial situation. How about war bonds? Now, I think some of these color troops automatically get recruited. Uh, looks like they're going to be part of the Army of Washington. First things first, they're going to need some better weapons, so let's uh, just do an automatic upgrade. They're going to get Sharps rifles, Merrill carbines, and Springfield rifled muskets. But I'm going to transfer them into one of the existing armies rather than keeping them in Washington. Let's send them over to the Army of Kentucky under Sherman. Take some time to get them there. All right, so we auto-resolved the battle because I had such an overwhelming advantage in numbers. And it looks like we were able to successfully drive them off. I'm going to go ahead and use this now as an opportunity uh, to move ever south. So we're going to... Um, oh, Meade can't move at the moment. How about the Department of the West under Harney? He's fully ready. Uh, so we're going to make a move with him down to Grenada, Mississippi, with the idea being that the next move will be Jackson and then Vicksburg. Now, historically, Grant ended up... Uh, Grant did try to come down from this side. Uh, he came down with a force here while he sent Sherman down the river to try and land just north of Vicksburg. Couldn't take the city. It was a disaster at Chickasaw Bayou. He ended up in the spring of 1863, uh, coming around to the south uh, of Vicksburg, crossing there, marching up. They fought a battle, um, fought a battle here. Then they fought a battle here at Raymond. Then they take Jackson. Then they turn west, fight a battle at Champion Hill, and then lay siege to Vicksburg. Hopefully, it won't be that complicated for us. Well, that's kind of interesting. Kentucky secedes. I'm really not sure how that was allowed to happen. I've been defeating the Confederate armies everywhere, but it looks like he's been moving north in behind me. Interesting. All right. And the problem is I can't even really pull back with these guys. Um, what's that do to his national morale? It brings it back up to 37. So maybe I'm better off to just not even worry about that. We'll send the Army of the Kanawha over. 
to try and deal with McCall's core. But I'm, you know, I'm not gonna spend a great deal of time worrying about trying to deal with, trying to deal with these guys when I can end the war if I can take a couple more southern cities. Okay, I'm moving the Cairo squadron south. I just won another naval battle on the Mississippi. Uh, we're gonna get them, trying to keep them kind of parallel to what the Department of the West is doing. We're getting into the spring now, so movement should work a little better. We'll take Grenada. Supply. Be a little bit of a concern here. But we've got fairly good readiness still. I'm going to go ahead and just make my move for Vicksburg now. There's another victory, by our, uh, this time by our New Orleans squadron, 115 guns strong. I don't know what he's thinking going after them. I think we probably only lost that one because they had just fought a battle and there were just some organizational issues because there's no way with the guns that we had that there should have been an issue. Disaster at Fort Monroe. Okay. That's how we're going to play this. 8,000 men just took Fort Monroe. So let's send Sumner down there to go deal with that. All right, this is going to be a pretty important battle. Our Army of Indiana is going to be taking on uh, about 30,000 Confederates. We're made up of half cavalry here. Uh, and this is one of those battles that is small but significant because of where it's taking place. And it's going to be fought in Louisville, where we need to try and drive these guys back out of Kentucky. All right, I was starting to get into a defensive position to cover these bridges. And he's already crossed and coming in over here. So uh, that's kind of where things are. Uh, let's bring Carl Schurz out here on this side. And then I guess we'll have to start making our move. All right, so I just realized I haven't upgraded the weapons on the Army of Indiana. So we've all got like reboard muskets, mixed cavalry weapons, nothing really very good. Uh, how about our artillery? Is that any good? We got uh, these guys got Enfield rifled muskets, uh, Model 1817 mixed muskets. So we've got one decent unit. We do have some 12 pounder howitzers, which isn't the worst battery. Three inch rifles, excellent. That we could use. Pretty wide open battlefield. do this. Let's try to get Cadwallader's division out here on the flank if we can and then start to bring them around. Bring Schurz up a little bit. a lot more casualties than we're inflicting so far. I think a lot of that has to do with the kind of weapons we've got. Once I get the artillery in position, I think that'll help. Send some skirmishers out briefly there. I'm going to hold these guys back for now until I wait and see what he does. He's got a whole division on the other side of the river. That actually helps some because we're pretty even in terms of numbers. Come on, Cadwallader, get your boys in position. give him an attack order. Figure your people out, dude. Okay, we're starting to get artillery in position now. I'm 
So far, things are not looking real promising. About three to one casualties in his favor. The weapons are just not doing the job for us here. Definitely gotta upgrade the weapons on this army. But that doesn't help me today. Thousand men lost already in the first brigade. Graham's about to break. Push forward, Kedwalader. All right, let's do this. Let's take a chance here. We're gonna shift the cab over here and see if we can't try to break his right before things get out of hand. I know Graham's losing men. Ton of men. As soon as this cav gets into position over here, I don't know what Cadwallader's doing, but he's got a guy facing the wrong way. There goes Graham, there goes Moore. All right, let's push the cab real quick. I think this is getting out of hand in a hurry though. Oh boy. I'm gonna push him up this way, see if we can't quickly break this side of the line. Rally, you just gotta hang on over there. Broke one of them. I'm afraid it's not going to be enough, though. There goes another one. Good night. Too many casualties. Okay, that worked out pretty well. Still didn't shift the bar any. Yeah, I think we're done here. This could turn into a major defeat if we're not careful. There goes Riley. All right, let's get out of here. All right, well, I thought we were really, really close to winning this war, and then he snuck behind me into Kentucky and uh, is keeping things alive that way. So it's going to be a little while yet. We're going to have to deal with all of that. But I think we take Atlanta, we take Vicksburg, and Petersburg, and it might still be enough. But that'll be for another day. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below, and we'll see you again in a couple days with the next episode. Thanks for watching.